ready to get real with the minister, Jonathan Simmons, on Real Talk Sports, 1570 WIGO, bringing a different perspective to sports journalism. to the best real talk sports where these pro sport analysts do more than get in front of the throws they never miss a catch or a call no matter the sport they always have the right call not just entertaining it's the true sportsman's forecasting guy feel free when you cash in or let it ride with real talk sports by your side, that is. Just to keep the ball bouncing even more, it's two-way talk with live question and review. So be sure to listen in on the new WIGO. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Real Talk Sports Show. I'm your host, the Minister Jonathan Simmons, and we're broadcasting to you here on Atlanta's incredible radio, WIGO 1570 on the AM dial. We're also broadcasting anywhere in the world online. You can go to www.realtalksports.net. Click the Listen Live button, and voila, you will hear us broadcasting to you right here and right now. You also can find us on any mobile device, iPad, uh, Android Power. I don't care what you got. Put in the free TuneIn radio application if you don't have it. That's TuneIn. Put it in. Click WIGO 1570, and uh, you will find us broadcasting right here and right now. And also, for those of you who like the visual effect, we are on Periscope. And we're also on Facebook Live Video. All right, well, let's go around the booth here and uh, introduce you to who we have in the building. Uh, sitting right across from me is a gentleman that is well-known here in the area. Uh, he is a, uh, a living legend, we call him. He was known as Captain America when he pro prowled the fields of Georgia Tech down the flats. Georgia Tech Hall of Famer on the all-ACC 50-year team, Mr. Ken Swilling in the building. Good evening, Pastor. Good evening. Good evening. How you doing? Hey, Amen. Now, see, I, I, I'm in trouble now because he doesn't got the official name, Pastor. Amen. <laughs> 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 and uh, right next to him, we have uh, one of the original Young Guns, Mr. Reggie Brown in the yes, building. Yes, sir, in the building. Ready to talk some sports. Hey, Amen. I, I want to do this before we get it out. I certainly want to offer my condolences. I know that one of your fellow students uh, lost their lives uh, during the holiday season, so uh, we certainly want to give uh, our condolences to you and certainly the families, all those people at Mondays Mill High School uh, for our life loss uh, too soon. And uh, he's hiding in the background here, but we're going to have him uh, pop in because uh, we got to show him some love because it's Alabama Crimson Tide. Roll, Tide, roll, baby. Mr. VJ in the building. <laughs> Another SEC uh, strong arm <laughs> uh, guy that uh, he's a somewhat young gun. Mr. Miles Tyson in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. SEC, baby. Yeah, well, we're going to talk a little bit about the SEC, how their record <laughs> has been in the bowl games thus far. We're also going to talk about another conference that we had highly touted, the Big Ten, which is also, uh, unfortunately, not faring too well in the bowl games. <laughs> we'll talk about them as well. And then, of course, we have some breaking news, guys. There's a lot of good stuff, a lot of uh, interesting stuff, some uh, even to some degree shocking stuff that went on uh, over the weekend. And uh, we're going to touch base on all those. First of all, how many of you guys got a chance to watch the uh, the battering, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, destruction of a former champion, Miss Ronda Rousey, in less than a minute? I got did. a chance to see it. Got a chance to see it. I, I didn't pay for it, but I got yeah. a chance Amen. to see it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, I, did, I, I didn't either. No. Well, I'm not paying for a, see a woman fight. No way. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and listen, I'm going to tell you something. It took me a long time, man, to really get with that whole thing with the women fighting because it just, it, it's kind of odd, man, to see a woman, even when Layla Ali was boxing, just to see, especially a good looking woman in there mm, just, yeah, yeah, you know, taking shots yeah. and hitting people. I'm thinking, well, you don't have to worry about me trying to holler at you. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. You okay. Know, you know, you, uh, All right, hold on. Rhea, Rhea, come on in, man. Hold come on. on let me in. come back. Let me come back. Let me come back. Let me get it straight. But that, but it really, but guy who has a daughter, that's the other thing. I just kind of find that to be, it was difficult for me to see that. And certainly the way Rousey got pummeled, that was just a, a bad situation. All right, that was a real bad situation. I always tell folks, I, you know, in, in the streets, I don't break up female fights because, most of the time, when they fight, they are really for real. Oh yeah. You know, uh, we we as fellas, we kind of will, will sell wolf tickets to, to do whatever. But they about to but get. But if it. a woman is really fighting, they really for real. They fighting, yeah, something about um, to go on. And you know, looking at the fight, I think Ronda Rousey that should be, could be, 
It could be and should be her last fight. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know. I think that she is, uh, uh, is convinced that this is it. Um, you know, I really, to be honest with you, Ken, I don't think she should have fought this fight. I, I thought that after the, the first beating she took, she should have retired because sometimes, you know, when you lose your edge, it's just time to go. On. Plus, she's been, she started to do movies and, she, yeah, the, well, you know. the, the, the mystique was gone right. because uh, the, the secret had been kind of, kind of let out. You know, and 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 she fought another striker, right? Which, which is which bad is which matchup. a bad matchup for yep. her. It was just mm -hmm. a bad matchup all the way around, and you know, the, she never really got took close to the girl, and mm -hmm. it was just uh. uh the only you know. reason she fought this fight was to get back in the limelight, and there was a three million dollar check waiting on her. Well, now the story comes out about that. Cat. So that got to be the main reason because she came in there uh, just from the jump start when she was walking into the ring. It didn't look like she was gonna. Win it all. I mean, she was never have her spunk back. She looked like a totally different fighter, and she just got knocked out. Mm -hmm. Embarrassed herself. You know, she's a competitor, so, you know, just like you said, you, going back to what you said, she should have been done after the last fight. That was only a, a first loss, though. You know, it ain't too many boxers that's undefeated or fighters that's undefeated now. You got very, very few, maybe two or three, maybe, mm -hmm. uh, completely mm -hmm. undefeated that's mm -hmm. on that level of well, boxing. And, um, you know, so... I mean, so I, she's a competitor. I can't blame her for coming back. But like you said, after she done got knocked out again like this, you, you need to go sit down somewhere. You know, it's time that you <laughs> well, it, it, To me, it's, it's the ding, ding, ding. The young gun got it right. Uh, that payday will make well, you jump out of, the, out of the bed. And that's really what it was. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah because cause, cause, I'll tell you how big the payday was. The, ch the champ only got 200 grand. Yeah. Yeah, they had a $4 million mm -hmm. purse, and basically – Ronda got almost 90% of that purse. Yeah. And, and what they said afterwards was because she was the drawing card. And I'll tell you, man, I went to the young speaker not paying. I want to give a shout-out. Uh, NFL alumni of Georgia. Brothers, we appreciate you. Letting the old school car <laughs> crash in with you. They were up at the, uh, at the Hudson Grill in uh, Sandy Springs. Okay. And uh, we watched the fight there. And I've never seen so many grown men <laughs> jump up <laughs> out their seats <laughs> behind a woman. That wasn't theirs <laughs> in my life. Uh, it, it, really, the carnage was so quick uh, and so devastating. Uh, yeah, but that's what it was because really everybody was there to watch her. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, and, yeah, and, and, it, and it was and there was emotional attachment. They talked about some people crying after the fight and being, you know, just they broke down. They cried because they mm -hmm. spent $70 for a 48-second <laughs> fight. Dun, 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 well, the, uh, under, the undercard was all right. The undercard was, was, was nice. Oh, yeah, the, the fight before that, five yeah. rounds of just, yeah. that was brutality, bro. Right. I mean, those two guys, were getting they were getting after it. I mean, I, I don't mm -hmm. really mean for me, UFC, that's that's grown man stuff. Because they can hit you with anything. Elbow, right, right. shim, <laughs> kick you in your shin, yeah, anything. Right. Anything but uh, but, but the eye. Eye. Right, and hit you in the groin. That's the only thing, two things they can't do. Anything else is legal, man. They hit you with yeah. the and the other thing that's crazy about UFC is, because like you talk about on the street, you got a shot. There's somebody knock you down. At least back in our day, now they're scandalous. Back in our day, yeah. if you got knocked down, guys would kind of say, okay, man, he's down. That's it. UFC, hey, man, if the ref don't catch you in time, dude, you're going to take a couple of take bad a few, shots. A few more while you sleep. Right, you're <laughs> right, you're out. You're on the, you're flat out, and the guy just. Yeah, toes in the mouth and yeah. things. Everything. 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 Oh, yeah. Well, look, guys, if you want to chime in, uh, talk about uh, – uh, the Ronda Rousey fight or anything else. Phone lines are now open, 404-361-1571. You're listening to the Real Talk Sports Show. And certainly want to give a shout-out to our sponsors, Pinstripes Entertainment Center, located right off of uh, Highway 138 here in Stockbridge, Georgia. They have everything you need to entertain yourself and your family. They have uh, multiple bowling lanes. They have a full arcade. They even have a, a laser tag facility and a wonderful restaurant slash bar and grill. So check them out. Located again right behind the Office Depot in Stockbridge, Georgia. And, of course, uh, if you need a commercial truck, new or used, uh, check out our guys at Bellamy Strickland Commercial Trucks, 145 Industrial Boulevard in McDonough, Georgia. Bellamy Strickland, the truck capital of Georgia. And last but not least, of course, we want to give a shout-out to Redemption Fellowship Christian Ministries, uh, where our own Miles Tyson is the deacon. Believe it or not, the, the guy who stirs the pot here is. <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> don't, don't, people looking. But I'll tell you, folks, if you read your Bible, the, the, the Lord had all kinds of disciples. You know, <laughs> Peter was a little rough-edged, so I guess Miles is our modern-day Peter, a little rough on the edge. <laughs> Amen. He's going to cut somebody else. Right. Yes, well, I don't know. We got might have to watch him. We keep a, a side-eye. Uh, the other breaking news here, um, I don't know if it's breaking news or not, man. I really tried to get into too much of, you know, the gossip and all that kind of stuff in TMZ sports. Mm -hmm. But, of course, um, you know, when you win, 
you, you have a day off in the NFL, like any other job. You do have time off. We've certainly been coming to the holidays, and most of the guys that play in the NFL are significantly younger than me. Matter mm-hmm. of fact, Miles Lobb are younger than you. They're in their 20s. They're mm-hmm. like BJ's age. And at that age, I know I was at that age, uh, my sensibilities on uh, what I would do was – look at the young gun. He's like saying, boy, I'm glad I didn't know the preacher then. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, my sensibilities were a lot different <laughs> then than they are today. And certainly I can't imagine – what you were doing, matching up those sensibilities, Ken, with a lot of money. Well, evidently the New York Giants receiving corps felt that they could, they needed to get away. So they packed up and went down to Miami mm. and hung out with Justin Bieber and Two Chains and a whole arsenal of fellas. And, uh, of course, you know how social media is. Um, people have footage of them evidently on some type of yacht uh, with a lot of women that didn't have a lot of clothes on. So, um I guess I guess my question is, Ken, to you first. <laughs> Ken's like, why you get me involved in this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I guess the question is, do, do you do you think that the players? Keep in mind now, there was no incense. Nobody said they did anything. No brawling. No drinking. Anything like that. So I guess the question is, is that um, um, was it okay? I mean, would you have done that? I guess I'd ask you the question: Would you have done that in knowing that the next week you got to play a playoff game? Probably not uh, doing a playoff game because, you, you know, this is the only reason it's being reported is because they're playing in the playoffs. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, had it been a regular season game because guys go and do things all the time. All the time. That's what I'm thinking. You know, yep. so, you know, it's not a, such an alarming kind of thing. Right. It, it is their day off. You do. You just don't have, you know, a lot of us don't ha- are afforded the, uh, the opportunity or don't have the money to get on a jet and fly somewhere, <laughs> you know, just on the spur of the moment or do whatever. So this is what they do. This is what guys in the league do. Mm-hmm. I've, yeah, I've been there. I've seen it done. Um, have not really participated in such <laughs> foolishness. <laughs> However, I was in college and did do a road trip <laughs> 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 or two. You know what I'm saying? So uh, yes, before sir. before before Monday classes. So I do understand guys um, doing what they do. Probably would not. Uh, have liked it to be done during the uh, playoff right. stretch yep. because, you know, now you're supposed to be focusing. You're supposed to be, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, you're you not supposed to be partying and carrying on right now. You know, you know. You would think. You would think, right. you know, you, your mind. So, but, the, but this is a different day and age. This is a different time period. This is a different um, whole genre of, of guys that are in the NFL, you know. And so, uh, you know, what they did is, you know, their coaches, you know, kind of had their back a little bit. And he kind of said, well, you know, well, it was a day off. Right. You know, so. He left and, it at that. No other comment. Hey, no other comment. Right. Day off. What they're doing is- I don't get it. Yeah. He's been your only all-star year in, year out. I mean, that's just that Hawks mentality. You, see, you know, if they want to keep continue to trade in the East, giving away all their players and continue to try to do this rebuilding around Dwight Howard, I say go ahead. If that's. Mm-hmm. If that's what you think is going to get you <coughs> to the playoffs, and definitely not going to be against the top contenders like Toronto or Cavaliers. They're happy with mediocre. That's what they are. They're satisfied with it. You know, it's, it's just been like that for the last, you know, four or five years. You know what I'm saying? They, they just, it's been like that for a while. But Well, I'm going to tell you one thing quick here before we go to the break and shift over <coughs> and start talking about college football. The reason why they won that game against the Spurs, the reason why they won the overtime game against the Knicks, and I know Melo got out early, the reason why they won the game before that is real simple. They shot the ball better. <laughs> when the Hawks shoot from the outside, yes. they are a very difficult team to beat. With the Hawks team that we saw against the Spurs, that's the team that we're used to seeing. They shot 50% from three-pointers. Corver mm-hmm. was four of nine, which is about where he was in those, those years mm-hmm. when he was clicking around 45%. And Tim Hardaway Jr., in 31 minutes, put up 29 points, including six of seven from three, including the game-tying mm-hmm. three-pointer with about five seconds left to go. That was a dagger. I mean, San Antonio was all over him, but I was like maybe about 15 feet away. He just like like his dad did and then looked like his dad afterwards. Like, <laughs> how you like me now? <laughs> and and that's guys. really what the Hawks really need. They need a guy that can do that. But yet in the third quarter on a breakaway, over the rim with a slam dunk, right. which brought the crowd to their feet. If the Hawks can get you that kind of play with any consistency, they are a decent team. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, well, uh, that's, a, that's a wrap up here. We're going to go to a break here, and then we're going to come back and talk bowl season here. We're going to talk about uh, all the trials and tribulations of the SEC, the Big Ten, and has a clash of egos derailed a shot at a national title. Come on back for more. Hi there, my name is All right, guys. Hey, everybody. What's up? 
All right, guys, uh, we're having a good time here again. Phone lines are open, 404-361-1571. It's El Capitan, Captain America right there. There's uh, the young gun right there. That guy's head that I'm moving behind. That's Mr. Miles Tyson. <laughs> and, of course, yours truly. Of course, whoa, wait a minute. There he is, representing Alabama. BJ, now he's going to talk to us a little bit. Normally our intern is behind the scenes, but he's going to talk to us because his, him and his family actually went to the game. So we're going to get a little yeah. feedback from him, what it was like, and what he thinks about the Lane Kiffin, Nick Saban conundrum. Did it cost him a championship? Uh, I don't know, guys. What do you think? Give us a call, 404-361-1571. Has Nick Saban, Lane Kiffin, Clash of Eagles, could that derail the tide from getting their second straight national title? And put Nick on par with the... Uh, a legendary guy that used to wear the house tooth hat. All right. The bear. The bear. All right, guys. We're going back to the live feed. Here we go. Rod. Important is I did talk to the team on Monday about it. Fourteen, we lost two games back to back, and a lot of people were ready to give up the shift and jump off, and we ended up winning eleven games in the Orange Bowl. So. Uh, you know, there's still a, a lot of football to be played. You just got to take it one game at a time and play. Uh, you know, I'd like for us to be playing better than we're playing, but who knows, maybe this is the week. We are back here with the Real Talk Sports Show, and uh, the guy sitting across from me, Mr. Ken Swan, I, I thought that I was in trouble because I, I saw that look in his eye. You know, he's getting that flashback like he's hurt. <laughs> I was thinking, uh oh. I said, You see, we have a problem in here. Hold <laughs> up. Hold up. Of course, that was a Georgia Tech fight song, and we played that because uh, Georgia Tech uh, has really, I think, acquitted themselves very well, and we played those remarks from Coach Johnson because this is a guy, I understand that, you know, and even, uh, you know, Ken has said that he's not necessarily a great fan of his offense. And uh, a lot of Tech fans are not. But the realities are, I want to read just a couple of stats here, which, you know, I always like to get the stats on Miles. This is not just, these are just not numbers, bro. These are about W's and L's. This is the story here. Georgia Tech finished 2016 season with a 9-4 and record overall. That's a better record than the team up the road in Athens, just so that you know. Number two, this is the... Uh, this is the 11th nine-win season in the last 60 years. Four of those 11 nine-win seasons have been since Paul Johnson has been there. They did it in 2008, 2009, 2014, and 2016. Okay? Georgia Tech is the unofficial champion of the SEC East <laughs> because they have the best record. 3-0, three and oh, baby. 3-0, three three and and oh, baby. 3-0, oh, baby. Uh, they knocked off Vanderbilt, who... Uh, Two of the worst teams in the league. Go ahead. But, but hang on a second. If I'm not mistaken, you <laughs> like Tennessee, right? Yeah. And did, 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 didn't, didn't, <laughs> didn't Vanderbilt put something on y'all? They beat us. They didn't put nothing on them. Um, they did, they, did, they, did they? Did they? Was the final score? <laughs> yeah, they won. Was well, okay. not in your favor, right? Y'all <laughs> lost. I just want to make sure <laughs> that I wouldn't make a mistake. Y'all lost. And they also beat Kentucky, a team that uh, basketball school Kentucky. That I don't care, yeah. but they have one of the better offenses in the SEC East, and in, and uh, and of course. We all know about overrated Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> they beat them, too. And, oh, by the way, a Vanderbilt team that you guys couldn't seem to beat, Tech blew them out 38-7. to 7. Just, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I'm just mm -hmm. saying. And, and don't worry. You'll have all the shots to take this uh, right to the field next oh, year. Yes, sir. And, right coming, and coming soon. <laughs> coming yeah. soon. September. Game. <laughs> At the end of the stadium. <laughs> Mercedes-Benz <laughs> Stadium, the first game in there. That's exactly why I'm quiet over here, because it's going to be settled right there. Tennessee the against week, Georgia Tech. They're going to get them right there, boys. Well, uh, speaking of Georgia Tech, I'm going to try to see if I have a Georgia Tech expert. Besides Mr. Ken, we have a guy that uh, covers Tech, both uh, football and basketball. Uh, he's on GoJackets.com. I'm going to try to see if we have him on the line yet. I'm going to check with my engineer. He's here. Mr. Rod McKenzie, welcome back to the show, sir. How are you doing tonight? Hey, man. Uh, Tax Slayer Bowl. I, you know, I, before I start talking, I, I got to tell you something. I really, I guess because of my age, I hate the sponsors having the name of the bowl. I think it's the stupidest thing of all time. I think it takes away from tradition because when you say Tax Slayer Bowl, it sounds like you got a bunch of accountants running around. <laughs> now, the Gator Bowl, I like that. I like the Gator Bowl. That's tradition. Well, anyway, Rod, listen up. 
what was it? Gator Bowl, uh, three straight for Paul Johnson against the SEC. What was really kind of the big key uh, for Georgia Tech and their and their, really their dominance over Kentucky? I think that the two things I noticed, number one, the the offensive line dominated uh, Kentucky's defensive line. The previous week uh, in their game against Louisville, they they kept uh, Louisville's defensive line, I mean, uh, offensive line under check. And, and this game, Tech really dominated them. And the same on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, more than any game this year, Tech's defensive line put pressure on the quarterback all game. These guys were playing like they were, you know, like they were possessed. So I think those were the two main keys to the game. And, of course, when when your B-back gets 169 yards, uh, you really have to have and talk about the offensive line in that equation because they were, they were really uh, opening up some holes and, and uh, moving ahead uh, to allow Mills to gain those yards. And, uh, you know, you, you got a situation where Mills is going to see a lot more carries probably next year because uh, Marshall is moving on to Old Dominion. So, uh, you know, again, it looks like uh, Tech, once again, coming off of a nice end of the season, looks like they got a lot to look for. And, Ken, again, I know you're very excited. You got some Ken folk that are going to uh, be joining the uh, the Tech roster as well. So big stuff going on for, uh, for, for Georgia Tech. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, 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 Rod, this is Ken Swilling here. I, I wanted to say um, – I, it, it just seemed to me I wasn't at the game watch it on TV. It seemed to me that that, that uh, Kentucky never made a concerted effort to to stop anything uh, <laughs> uh, that Georgia Tech was doing, especially uh, you know running the option to, going against the option. Yeah, you kind of want to take away the dive if you take away anything else. You take want to take away the dive and try to get everything outside and hopefully your speed can compensate for anything else that takes uh, that takes place. But they never made an effort to really do that. And uh, I know that the line did a good job, but from that standpoint, what did you kind of see in that from that standpoint? You know, the, you're right. The thing that really surprised me is that, you know, they kept running mills. They, they weren't stopping them, and they, they never made any changes. I kept waiting for Kentucky to do something different, and they, they stayed in their 3-4, their tried to take away the perimeter. Uh, I guess they wanted to, to, you know, take away the big play and force uh, Tech to go on some long drives, but uh, – that strategy really uh, backfired against them, and and you, you had a feeling every time Tech went on offense that they could could keep the ball and, and, and score every time they had the ball. So, like you said, it it, it was really surprising the, the strategy that uh, that Kentucky used. Well, I tell you, man. Uh, it, again, you know, you look at Tech, and you're looking at they got a lot of guys coming back. I guess you know, for me, the big question is. Um, can Coach Johnson, he, 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 he said in the press conference, he kind of told me no. When I, I kind of brought up, you know, Coach, it was like you guys are throwing the ball more. He said, no, if you go back and check, we're still averaging about 15 to 20, 15 to 20 attempts a game. He said the difference is that we've been much more efficient in terms of pass completions. But I guess my thought is how much more will you see him continue to grow in that area? Because, Ken, I'm sure you saw this year, there was a lot more just straight pass plays where Georgia Tech actually made some of their bigger plays. They weren't coming off, you know, the, a trickery. They were just, hey, man, drop back and throw the ball. And I'm just wondering, can Coach Johnson continue to grow? Because I think that's going to be the difference between Tech being able to get to that next level. I, I just I just think that when you get against these better teams, even with that, you know, you don't see it that often, at some point the athletes on the field are going to, you know, they're going to they're gonna stop you. You're going to need to be able to throw the ball. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it, and – uh, I think maybe one of the biggest plays of the game was uh, that that big third down play in the fourth quarter right. when when they completed the pass uh, to Ricky June and uh, the one thing that that Paul mentioned in the press conference was that he noticed that the Kentucky had been firing the corner and he felt that they were going to do that on that play and sure enough the corner fired and and June was wide open on the sidelines and that that sort of that was sort of the clincher of the game because it allowed to continue the drive, use the clock, and eventually score the touchdown. Well, no doubt, man. And I, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm waiting for just another week or two because I got a sneaking suspicion that uh, my prognostication might be correct. I predicted at the beginning of the season that Tech would finish somewhere in the top 25. <laughs> and so uh, depending on what happens to the rest of these bowl games, they got a good shot. And if that happens... Preacher Mike throw down. I might kind of do a little something on the air. I might do a little, <laughs> I might do a little dance routine or something, you know. Mm -hmm. 
But, uh, yeah, just great, great victory for Tech and great way to close out the season. Well, let's shift gears a little bit. Uh, also, it was a big, big weekend because um, a guy who we saw in the early press conference I thought had a little bit of an edge to himself, Josh Pastner seemed very rankled when everybody said, you guys might even win a game in the ACC. And if you remember in the ACC press conference, it was the North Carolina coach that made some statements about how difficult it would be for them to compete. Well, uh I think we had a little bit of an upset here. <laughs> North Carolina knocked off 75-63. What was the big key for the Jackets in that game? Well, I, I think the one constant for the team all year has been they've been playing good defense and, uh, you know, and moving the ball well. And in this game, after the, the close game with North Carolina A&T, he challenged Josh Okogie to be, to be more assertive. He told him, we need you to be play a bigger role on this team. He sort of had an up-and-down year, which you expect maybe from a freshman. Uh, he went out, uh, you know, took the ball to the hoop, scored 26 points, made his foul shots, rebounded more than he had in the past few games. So I think that was that was the key for, for Georgia Tech in that game. And I think the other player that you have to take a look at is Josh Heap. He's a kid that had a hip operation. Missed all the summer, most of the preseason. And he's just now rounding into form. And uh, as a senior and, and as a guard, a guy that's going to handle the ball a lot, he was a big key in that game. And uh, I think that's going to be a, a kid you're going to have to take a look at moving forward if Tech is going to be successful. Well, I'll tell you another guy that uh, that I saw immediately um, that I think is paying big dividends. He's a double.